pomegranate, pomegranate, and pomegranate once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Today, I'm back with fruit of the day, the one and only pomegranate. So maybe you like them, maybe you hate them. Maybe you've seen one at a farmer's market or maybe in your local grocery store, picked it up and thought, what in the world is this? How do I eat it, right? Well, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the pomegranate. All right, first up, a little bit of background information. Pomegranate seeds come from a pomegranate, <laughs> which is a fruit about the size of a large orange, obscurely six-sided with a smooth, thick skin that ranges in color from brownish yellow to deep red. So, 23% Nation, take a look at the picture. Looks amazing, right? The inside of a pomegranate is a sight to behold. Separated by cream-colored membranes are chambers of hundreds of aurals, which are the seed pods inside a pomegranate. Once again, take a look at the picture. As you can see, there are tons of seeds separated by that white membrane. These aurals consist of juicy, brilliant red fruit surrounding tiny, crisp, edible seeds. Did you hear that, guys? Edible seeds. That's right. So basically, when you're eating a pomegranate, ultimately, you're eating the seeds. That's right. And last but not least, pomegranates are sometimes called Chinese apples. That's right. So the next time you're in China, just simply ask for an apple and don't be surprised if you get a pomegranate. So there we have it, guys. Just a little bit of background information about the one and only pomegranate. All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. Now, you've probably seen one of these fruits inside of a grocery store or maybe at your local farmer's market, right? And you picked it up and you wondered, how in the world am I supposed to eat this thing, right? Well, here we go. Most people just eat the seeds or arrows of a pomegranate. The juicy and nutritious seeds gusts with flavor as you eat them, and one pomegranate can hold over 600 seeds. Interesting. I didn't know that. You can also eat the creamy white pithy part surrounding the seeds, but it's quite bitter. The juice of pomegranate seeds is the source of grenadine syrup, which is famous for its use in the classic non-alcoholic beverage known as a Shirley Temple. So, the next time you're up for a cocktail, you may want to order yourself a Shirley Temple, but understanding that the base ingredient is pomegranate juice. So there we have it, guys. Just a few fun facts about the one and only pomegranate. All right, now it's time for the not so fun facts. You ready for this? Here we go. Warning. It can be a bit messy to open a pomegranate and the juice does stain surfaces. So I wouldn't advise wearing your nicest or whitest shirt, especially if it's your first time ever opening up a pomegranate. Also, if you have blood pressure issues or take blood pressure or blood thinner medications, check with your doctor regarding your intake of pomegranate seeds. Since pomegranate can affect blood sugar by lowering it, check with your doctor before consuming pomegranate products before or after your surgery. So there we have it, guys. If it's your first time, please don't wear white. <laughs> and also, if you're on any type of blood pressure medication or blood thinner medication, please consult with your doctor or medical professional. So there we have it, guys. A few not so fun facts about pomegranates. All right. Now let's talk about the 520 rule, of course, as it relates to pomegranates. Guys, the 520 rule is all about food labels. Yes, ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, ultimately we're talking about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. 
Now, let's switch over to the picture. This is our sample food label. As you can see, it is divided into three parts. Part one is the percent daily value column that's simply shaded in, we could say purple or maybe lavender. And then we have uh, the nutrients that unfortunately do a lot of harm when they go inside of our body temple. So that's why we have to talk about saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. And our last section are the nutrients that actually do promote wellness and health inside the body temple. So say hello to dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Now, let's go back to the purple portion, right? The percent daily value column. Now, as you can see, percent DV is represented by percentages. Now, some percentages are high, whereas others are low. Basically, the percent daily value can range from as low as what? as low as 0% to maybe in excess of 100%, right? So that's a good thing. Now, when we talk about the nutrients that are highlighted in yellow, once again, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium, well, unfortunately, those nutrients do a really good job at promoting sickness, illness, and disease within the body temple. So if anything, you want to make sure that those percent DVs are definitely at the lower end of the scale, as close to 0% DV as possible. Next, when we talk about the blue minerals, such as dietary fiber, vitamins, and minerals, well, those nutrients promote wellness and health within the body temple. So if anything, you want to make sure that those percentages are close to 100% as possible, right? So let's break down the 520 rule and let's be a little more specific, shall we? So guys, if a food or beverage item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, so now that we've <clears throat> been exposed to the 520 rule, I guess we can now talk about the nutrition facts. Now, for today's lecture, we're going to simply say that a single serving of pomegranate is basically a half cup of pomegranate seeds. So here we go. So in a single serving, which, by the way, is only half a cup, not a full cup, you're only going to get 72 calories. Also, 16.3 grams of carbs, 1.5 grams of protein. And here, most people think that fruit doesn't contain protein. Well, that goes that myth. Next up, only one gram of fat, 3.5 grams of fiber. Now that's amazing. Also, 11.1 .1 grams of sugar. Now vitamin K comes in at 17.9% DV, which makes it a good source. Next up is vitamin C coming in at 14.8% DV, good source. Folate coming in at only 8.3% DV, not a good source. Potassium, 5.9% DV, not a good source. Vitamin B6 coming in at 3.5% DV, not a good source. And lastly is phosphorus coming in at only 3.1% DV, not a good source. So there we have it, guys, the nutrition facts about the one and only pomegranate. All right, now that we've been exposed to the 520 rule and the nutrition facts, we got to now talk about the health benefits. But before we do, I just want to talk with you very quickly. I want to drop a little wisdom on you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time that we discuss the principle of cause and effect. Now, some of us may already be familiar with this principle. Why? Because it's one of the seven hermetic principles. And it basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. 
So what does this all mean, Coach D? Well, here's what it means, is that if you want to be healthy, you have to cause it or you have to create it. On the other hand, if you want to be sick, you want to be ill, you want to develop some type of chronic disease, well, believe it or not, you're going to cause that too. So let's talk about it. To wrap all that up, I'm simply saying that the nutrition facts, right, or the nutrients that are in the pomegranate, well, those are the causes, right? Whereas the health benefits that we're about to go over are the effects. So health benefit number one is that pomegranate acts as a natural aphrodisiac. Now, a lot of us may be wondering, what in the world is an aphrodisiac? Well, basically what that means is that it puts you in the mood for being intimate, for maybe being sexual, right? Also, it reduces arthritis and joint pain. Now, the question is, which phytonutrients in pomegranates actually do that? Well, say hello to flavonoids, okay? Next up, it fights cancer. Now, pomegranates have a very interesting phytonutrient, and it happens to be called punicic acid. That's right, guys, punicic acid. It helps your body fight cancer. Next up, pomegranates, they lower blood pressure, right? We got to give a big thank you to the polyphenols. Also, pomegranates fight bacterial infections. Now, there are quite a few phytonutrients that belong two pomegranates that actually help them fight bacterial infections. So say hello to elagic acid, elagitannins, punicic acid, flavonoids, anthocyanidins, anthocyanins, estrogenic flavonols, and flavones. Wow, who knew the pomegranate had all of those phytonutrients? Next, Pomegranates improve heart health, and lastly, they improve memory. So say thank you to the polyphenols for that. So there we have it, guys. Lots and lots and lots of health benefits from the pomegranate. All right, now it's time to talk about food. Forks Over Knives is back. And as you all know, this is our go-to website for everything vegan, yes. So as usual, went to the website, did just a little bit of research, and look at what I found. Two amazing vegan pomegranate dishes that I definitely want to share with you right now. So let's talk about the first recipe. It's entitled Radicchio Salad with Cranberry Orange Dressing. Take a look at the picture. Looks delicious, yes. Now, let's take, it our, let's take a look at our second recipe, which is apple grapefruit pomegranate salad. Take a look at that picture. Looks delicious, yes. Now, if your mouth is watering, and I hope it is, all you have to do is go to the description box and click on the link. That's right, guys. I am providing you with a link to both recipes. Now, here's the really cool part is that when you click on the link, you're gonna find a lot of great information, such as the ingredient list, preparation time, as well as instructions as to how to make these recipes. So please, at your earliest convenience, check out both recipes on ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the fun facts. Coach D, thanks for not so fun facts as well as the vegan recipes. But what I really want to know is when in the world should I eat more pomegranate? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that's your question, then the perfect day, and I do mean the perfect day to eat more pomegranates, is Nature Day. What? Nature Day? Yes, good old Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, some of you may be wondering what in the world is the 23% challenge? Well, guys, it's a monthly seven day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here's the thing about the challenge is that it's only seven days long. As a matter of fact, it's the first seven days of every single month. 
the first all the way through the seventh. Now, <clears throat> Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, which simply means Nature Day is the first day of every month. So whether it's November 1st, December 1st, or even January 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right, so maybe you're interested. Maybe you are the type of person who is considering transitioning to a whole food plant-based diet, but maybe you don't quite know where to start. Maybe you're the type of person who has heart disease, diabetes, or maybe you're obese, or maybe you have cancer, or maybe you're having some type of skin issues, right? And you're looking for a way to holistically treat your condition. Well, guys, if that's you, then Coach D wanna offers you, wants to offer you three plausible ideas that can help you out. So I want to introduce you to a 3%, 13%, and a 23% vegan. Now, very quickly, a 3% vegan is anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up is a 13% vegan. <clears throat> now, this is anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only four days out of an entire month. Now, there are two ways in which you can go about this. It could be the first four days of the month, or it could be one day per week. I'll leave it up to you. And lastly is a 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. Now, what does that mean? It means that for the first seven days of every single month, I only eat foods that come from the five food groups of plant foods. So what are they? Well, here they go. Number one, fruits. Number two, vegetables and herbs. Number three, nuts and seeds. Number four, legumes, meaning beans, peas. And number five, whole grains. And of course, I only drink water. So there we have it, guys. Just a few little tips to help you out on Nature Day. All right, now here are some more help. Here are some more advice, right? Because ultimately I want your Nature Day to be successful. So tip number one, go to your local grocery store. Now, once you get there, you're gonna go to two places. Number one is the produce section and number two is the freezer aisle. Why the produce section? Well, that's where all of your fresh plant foods are gonna be located. And why the freezer aisle? Well, that's where your frozen plant foods are gonna be located. Now, some of us may be asking, what's better, fresh or frozen? Well, to answer that question, believe it or not, the nutrient content of both are pretty comparable. So please, don't stress yourself out. Next up, go visit your local farmer's market. Now, farmer's markets definitely have an advantage over grocery stores in that they only sell organic plant foods. So if you're crazy about organic plant foods, then please go to your local farmer's market. Next up, try out your prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So once you're done with the produce section and the freezer aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, depending on your grocery store, they may term it the kitchen or the prepared dishes section. Doesn't really matter. Here's what you want to do once you get over there. Take a look at all the foods that they have and then talk to the person behind the counter. Ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian, but vegan options. Ask for a quick sample and hopefully you like it. Now, if you do like it, purchase your food either by the pound or maybe even two pounds if you really, really, really like it. My next tip is to go visit a vegan restaurant. That's right, guys. It is definitely time for us to support the vegan community. Now, here's the one major advantage about eating at a vegan restaurant is that vegan restaurants do a really good job at hiring vegan chefs who basically know how to prepare the most nutritious and delicious vegan or shall I say plant-based dishes. Why? Because they know exactly which plant foods to combine together, right? And my last tip is to go visit or call up or maybe go online and check out a vegan meal prep company. Now, what's the advantage of working with a company like this? Well, here we go. 
They make it, they deliver it, you eat it. It's just that simple. So there we have it, guys. Four amazing tips. Actually, five amazing tips to help, to help make your nature day successful. All right, 23% Nation, it's time for our question of the day, which comes from yours truly. Why? Because I have an inquiry mind. So I want to know, pomegranates are sometimes called Chinese, you fill in the blank. <laughs> now, I believe I covered that answer earlier in the video. So if you didn't quite catch it, or if you simply missed it, just hit rewind. That's all you have to do. And please write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to, to please like, subscribe, and share the video, especially if you love pomegranates. Also, don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. Always remember to take care. God bless and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.